we're heading to Garage Mahal Fun. To meet the guy. The guy? Which guy's that? This is the guy from Manuel Plumbing and Heating ah. who found a gas valve uh -huh. that he claims will work with our system. How cool. And because it's HVAC and blah blah permits and blah blah city oh, county yeah. permit blah the blah building inspectors. So he's gotta put it in and the building inspector's gotta oh jeez. But yeah. if all goes well. Yeah. And I suspect that it will. I should. Because the guy said it will. Absolutely. Here in about two hours. We're going to be making Dungeons and Dragons figures oh, and boy. coupler pockets and switch stands and heck, I don't even know. That's right. I'll give my brother a call. Okay, we're in business again. You want to buy some? Excited. <laughs> so check this out. Right. The Steampunk 3D Duplicating System, also known as the White Milk Casting Yay. Machine. So this is the Steampunk 3D Duplicating System, also known as the Casting Machine. And this is the new gas valve, which should bring it to life. Perfect, that's what I was waiting for. That's, that's the sound. Perfect. That was a beautiful That line. is the sound indeed. That is what it's supposed to sound like, and this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to melt this metal. As you can see, it can run all the way out to around 1,000 degrees, although I've almost never taken it out that high. But it melts this metal, it's a lead-based alloy, and can be used for casting any number of interesting parts. And here we have the extremely high-tech, somewhat steampunk control system. Here's the main shutoff switch, which, uh, well, it blew a fuse and caught fire when we first turned it on, so, well, we put a penny in the fuse box. Uh, at any rate, most of these meters and gauges and things are highly, highly technical. Uh, this one is the partometer, and that controls the temperature of the metal. The machine also uses compressed air through this regulator, and the regulator controls the pressure. This is the clock. This will determine how long the motor spins, and this is the transmission determining the speed. This is the machine that makes the molds, and it uses heat and pressure to vulcanize the rubber molds, and we'll get back to that in a future show. But in theory, it's all functional now. <laughs> so let's make some stuff. This is a coupler pocket for Atherin engines, fits a couple of their different engines and it allows you to mount a KD coupler to the locomotive and looks really nice doing the job. So a quick visual inspection of the mold and then we're going to cover it with talc. Talc is used as a releasing agent and to help air get out of the mold. In this case the talc is in an old sock. The mold is then closed up, uh, hopefully in registration, and placed in the machine the mold is then locked in place with a heavy metal lid. When the machine cover is closed, a pneumatic ram locks all of that together and starts the motor. The metal is now poured in through the top of the machine and is distributed through the mold by centrifugal force. And now you wait for the metal to cool in the machine. It takes a few seconds, or, you know, a bit longer. Anyway, the machine shuts itself off and you're now ready to open it up, pull the mold apart, and see what in the world you made. The first couple of times you throw a mold, it's not uncommon for some of the castings to be flawed because the mold was ice cold when the hot metal hit it. But in this case, it looks pretty darn good for a first throw. <laughs> and let's keep in mind too that this is the first throw in 20 years. But here's the coupler pocket, that's what it's supposed to look like. It was then packaged in little plastic bags and it could be screwed to an Atherin locomotive and it holds the KD coupler in place and it really does a good job. And after throwing the mold a few times in no time at all, we had, gee, about 150 of the little suckers sitting here. Now it requires doing some visual inspection and sorting. After all, some of them have small flaws and you gotta go looking for those, throw those back in the pot and remelt them. 
Okay, let's try another mold. This one makes Dungeons and Dragons figures. Again, those were quite popular back in the 70s, but this is what those look like. Little people. We've got a couple of different knights here and a little diminutive lizard man. Now everything cools off rather quickly. This is what makes it possible to cast molten metal into a rubber mold. These lead-based alloys cool very, very rapidly and so they don't burn up the rubber. This technology has been around for a long, long time and they've used it to make little tin soldiers and so on. Now this is a mold that I made for Don Hendrickson and it produces the detail parts for his one half inch scale drop bottom gondola. An amazing, amazing model. He only ever produced one of them. But here you can see the finished model. There is a show on that if you want to go looking for it. But just an amazing model. And most of these are white metal castings from this machine. Now here's another use for the machinery. If you find some commercially available parts and you just want to make a whole bunch of them for yourself on your own railroad or whatever, nothing wrong with just throwing those in a mold and making up a bunch for your own personal use, as long as you don't go around selling the things. Well, we only ran three different molds while we were testing, but look how many parts we created. Well, it's sure great to have the system back up and working after all of these years. I'm telling you what, this is going to be fun. <laughs> well, that's oh, amazing. Wow. I just, it's so weird because after all this time, as soon as that gas flame lit, it was like, that's the sound. Yeah. That's the sound. Oh, I've heard that sound a lot, but it was and out of a water heater. The motor comes on and it's that's the sound. That's but most perfect. surprisingly, I pour the metal in there and it hits that rubber mold and it's like That's quite the that's smell. That's the smell. You know, it's just and it's just so weird to be 20 years away from something and then just doing it. It was sort of like when I played the game at Lagoon and won the two giant. There bears. you go, you this is 50 years away from something and you come back to it and it's just there. Yeah. It's just there. Yeah, In that like particular it. case, I <laughs> kind of ripped Lagoon off. Well, I didn't rip them off. We were only cheating a little. But but we got the two giant bears on the nah. midway because, you know, practice. And in practice this case, I've got a lot of practice yeah, making stuff on this do. machinery. And man, as soon as that was running, 20 years away from it, it was uh -huh. just like... Pew, pew, it's like I never stopped. Oh boy. <laughs> so fun. So cool. Now, now he's going to keep going and going and going. Like the and we're going to start, you know, sorting all of this mess out, figuring out what molds <laughs> go with what. And Karen here is the brilliant organizer, so she's figured out a whole system on cardboard bins. And yeah. we bought a bunch of cardboard bins. Yeah, look out Martha Stewart. And I'm going to make figures and we're going to have them all. And then we're going to put them all on either Guy's Hobby Shop or an eBay store or maybe both. Maybe both. Easy. So <laughs> it's cool. Mm -hmm. So it'll all be back. It'll all be back real soon. Mm -hmm. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop on over to the channel because that's cool. Mm -hmm. And there's 180 movies, I think, oh, over there. Right. Or it's almost dead. 180. Pretty close. Holy cow. And uh, that's all fun and exciting. And you want to subscribe to the channel because that's the cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on Slink, Slink, that blue button right there. You see it pop in? It says subscribe. Mm -hmm. means what it says. If you click on that, it'll take you to the channel. You're immediately a subscriber, and all of these other movies open up, and you can just watch them. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again in one week with some Christmas. There we go. That's the fun. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs>